I'm Martha Kelly. I am a local artist and illustrator and printmaker here in Memphis. And I've got a book that I illustrated, the Book of Common Worship for the Presbyterian Church USA, that is included in the St. John's Gospel exhibit here at Dixon Gallery and Gardens, Illuminating the Word. And it's really perfect that it's a part of this show because the Presbyterians have had a Book of Common Worship. They do an edition every 25 or 30 years, but they have never had art included before. And the St. John's Gospel, of course, has been this massive undertaking and this ongoing project with artists around the world. And they saw that going on, and in a much more modest way, they decided that they really wanted to include art in their book as well. And they asked me to do it. And it was, it was delightful to get to do. I did 16 prints, one for each section, and 16 little prints, and a whole bunch of small drawings, like this is how you pour the chalice, and, you know, very technical, helpful things for the for the ministers as well as the beauty at the beginning of every section. And when I saw this show in Omaha, they had a number of French illuminated manuscripts from the Middle Ages showing the historical span of how we use art to illuminate the word, to enhance, to give people a different way of thinking about the text. Because I feel like sometimes, I was, I was the artist in residence in my church for a few years, and I did a liturgical drawing every week based on the scripture. And some of these scriptures are so familiar that I find myself sort of sliding into the blah, blah, yes, blah, blah, I know that. But my picture that I have in my head from always is different from everybody else's picture. And I think sometimes when you put that picture on the page, it makes people, it twists that kaleidoscope for you and it makes people think about even the words differently because they have this different image that jolts them out of the way they've always heard these words and gives them a different viewpoint on it. And I think art has always done that. And art adds beauty and it adds a sense of worship in the middle of these texts. And what I love is that these texts have always been in use. They have got there's, there's not just the big book of common worship for mine, but there's a small one for people for daily prayer, and there's a small one for pastors to carry to the bedside and to take communion out or to bless buildings or what have you. And it's art is meant to be carried around in your daily life, and it's integral with the sense of words and the sense of prayer and the sense of worship. And I really love that, and I love that this exhibit has different sacred texts. St. John Gospel is glorious and it is the huge part of this show. But there are also some other books that put it in the historical context of how we have always married art with words in a sacred sense. And for me to get to stand in that sweep of history and to see my book alongside the hundreds of years of other books, thousands of years now, that have done art and sacred text as a, as a marriage has been such a beautiful thing. So here is the Book of Common Worship that is the book of mine. And they did, books have become so beautiful lately. I love this. They, they pressed my tree of knowledge. I talked them into a tree. For me, it's always about the trees. And I talked them into a tree for the cover and they were delighted with that. And then at the beginning of every section, there is a large print that is the main focus, and then there is a small print that is the more traditional Christian symbol. Because I'm a landscape painter, and I didn't really just want to recreate the shell with the drops on it for baptism. I said, what if baptism is just this flowing, gushing grace of water coming down everywhere? And they beautifully bought into it, because I said, that really is the very best work that I can do for you, is the work that's at the very heart of my experience and my work. Um, so we did landscapes and I did block prints, which is very different than the St. John's Gospel. These are linoleum block prints and I cut away the white and everything I leave when I roll ink on the plate, the ink will stick to. So I'm basically making a very big rubber stamp. And I did several different ones. I did, well, I did 16 different ones. <laughs> But the vineyard, and I got to think about landscape as symbolism. So the vineyard 
is the workers in the vineyard. That is for blessing ministers, elders, deacons on their ordination. Um, I got to think about the tree of life again at the end with the peacock. This is for the very end of the book and the peacock is a symbol of everlasting life. And so that ties in with revelation and the tree at the center of the city of God toward the end. It was, it was baptism obviously for the water. It was really wonderful to be able to think about the landscape in a way that reflects all of the symbolic landscapes of the Bible because you read Isaiah and Psalms and the writings and it's not just people. It's not just aimed at us. It's aimed at the entire creation. The mountains skip like rams. So all of the earth participates in this grand salvation history that is the Bible. And it felt right to me that all of creation was represented in this book that we also bring to worship. And the thing that the thing that I love about the St. John's Bible and getting to see that in this exhibit is seeing that whole sweep. They have very literal portraits of various people in through the course of the Bible. And then they have these beautiful, sweeping, abstract, cosmic kind of illustrations that that show the that show the cosmos and show the cosmos within us and show the cosmos within the text that we have. And they do these very beautiful abstractions and they play with the letters and they play with the colors, but you see it coming apart and pulling together again. It, it feels like creation right on the page. And my other favorite thing about this exhibit is that you get to see the process of creation that they are making the art. They have not only the finished paintings, which are done in the very traditional way, it's on vellum. It's using the very traditional pigments. They carved their own pens. They did the whole thing. They, they, I think they baked the feather quills and then carved them and then used them and used ancient Chinese ink blocks. And it's just, it's amazing the way they dove into the history of how these books were written and illuminated a thousand years ago when people were doing books like this by hand and they have done this in this huge glorious way but it's fascinating you can see the ink blocks you can see the pens you can see the paints in this exhibit and i think my favorite thing is that you can see the collages that they did they before they started painting on the very expensive beautiful vellum they would do these on paper and they would play with them and they would get to sort of arrange the pieces and get it just right. And as an artist, I love getting to see the back stage process of all of this. And so that for several of the, the different finished pages, they also have the collage that the artist used to do the whole mock-up. And then because it's a church project and that happens, you have to get permission from the whole, you know, committee that is overseeing this thing before you actually start in on your finished process. And that was certainly true with the book that I did well. Church work always has committees. So you get to see that process, but seeing the looseness of the collage versus the really finished, polished piece, I think is my favorite thing about the show.